Hey, I'm Caleb from Caleb's Aviation. Welcome back to another installment of Aviation News. There's quite a lot to cover, so let's get into it. First item up today, earlier this week there was a tragic accident involving an R-44 Raven helicopter just outside of downtown Houston, Texas. According to the Robinson Helicopter Company, the aircraft involved was an R-44 Raven II with a Lycoming IO-540 six-cylinder engine up to 250 horsepower. The aircraft in question, November 881 Kilo Echo, just taken off for a routine flight out of Houston's Ellington Airport. According to the Ellington Airport website, they first opened in 1984, and they are a 24-hour air traffic control facility equipped with instrument landing systems and full visual guidances including PAPIs and VASI systems. Prior to departure, a notum was put out by the air traffic controllers at the airport that there was a nearby radio tower with a light that was inoperable. Given that this flight would occur at night, this should have been something the pilot noted. However, had he noted it properly, the accident would not have occurred. It is believed due to nearby photo evidence and interviews of eyewitnesses that the helicopter rotor blade made contact with the cable on this radio tower. This, however, would keep the helicopter from flying, and it would crash into the tower, toppling it and destroying the helicopter in the process. The resulting problems would also cause a fire on the ground. It is believed that the cause of this tragic accident comes down to two factors. Pilot error for not reading and acknowledging the notum, which warned the pilots that the tower was nearby with an out-of-service light, and two, that the light was not repaired more quickly given its proximity to the airport. Also, these towers are nothing new or uncommon. You will usually encounter many of them painted in red and white colors. However, many of them also have cables and support wires. It's likely that the support wire was not seen by the pilots or the crew of the helicopter, even though the tower may have been noticeable. There's also a massive difference in the skyline near Houston, where you could previously see the tower that no longer exists. Moving on to some more interesting and perhaps more enjoyable news, the United States Air Force have begun their process of retiring the KC-10 Extender. The KC-10 has been an important part of the U.S. Air Force's fleet strategy for refueling purposes since it entered the fleet in March of 1981. The aircraft has seen hundreds and hundreds of missions and served for more than 30 years. Unfortunately, however, the aircraft is aging and it's not very fuel efficient. The KC-10s will be fully retired and withdrawn, well, by the time this video goes live. Unfortunately, the KC-10's time is drawing to an end, and like many other DC-10-based aircraft, the KC-10 will sadly end up in the scrapyards of Arizona and California to be disassembled for parts and second-hand use. However, the KC-10 is being replaced with the Boeing 767 variant of refueler, the KC-46 Pegasus, which is a beautiful aircraft, but the KC-10 will be missed by enthusiasts and plane spotters worldwide. Staying with aircraft retirements, Qantas have announced their very last Boeing 717 will take its very last flight today, October 26, 2024. This marks an end of an era for Qantas and Qantas Link, the operator for the Boeing 717, who have flown the jet for many, many years. The Boeing 717 aircraft has operated for the Qantas Group since September of 1998. Although it has not always operated for Qantas Link, starting off with Jetstar, their low-cost airline, and then eventually transitioning to the Qantas Link fleet in 2004, the Boeing 717 would help Qantas grow on their short to medium haul flying, and eventually the airline would grow quite fond of the aircraft. The Boeing 717 that Qantas flies was originally ordered by Australian carrier Trans Australian Airways, who went out of business. They later merged with Ansett Australia, who flew a large number of DC-9s and later MD-80s as well. The 717 was developed as the McDonnell Douglas MD-95, a shrunken variant over the MD-90 to replace the aging McDonnell Douglas DC-932 series. But then Boeing would merge with McDonnell Douglas, rechristening the aircraft as the Boeing 717. Additionally, Qantas would merge with Ansett Australia, the largest merger in Australian aviation history, and would take on the order of the now Boeing 717 from the now defunct Ansett Airways. 
Nowadays, with the Boeing 717 leaving the Qantas Link fleet, it's being replaced by their new Airbus A220-300 aircraft, which are also a great airplane and will do a great job of serving Qantas Link in the coming years. However, many enthusiasts and plane spotters, as well as people like myself, are sad they never got to ride the Qantas Boeing 717. Keeping in the theme of aircraft retirements, JetBlue have announced they will withdraw their last Embraer 190 aircraft from service by the end of November. This news is sad. For those who don't know, the Embraer 190 has been a key part of JetBlue's fleet since 2005 and has really helped the carrier grow its short to medium haul network, especially as the airline has begun to reinvent itself from a small regional carrier into a mainstream player now flying transatlantic service. However, the rest of their fleet consists of the Airbus A320 family, and Airbus aggressively marketed the A220 to JetBlue, who were looking at replacing the Embraers with either the Embraer 190E2, the more logical replacement, or the Airbus A220-300. JetBlue's existing relationship with Airbus and the aggressive marketing of the A220 convinced them to go with the Airbus A220 to replace the Embraer 190. And that brings us to today, the JetBlue E190 is old and has a very tired look and feel, and the new Airbus A220s introduce a much more modern feeling to the airline for short to medium haul routes. And JetBlue going with the A320 and now A220 makes a lot more sense in the end. Moving on, our final piece of aviation news, the world's fifth oldest airline, Czech Airlines, ceased operations earlier this week. On Saturday, October 26, 2024, Czech Airlines closed the chapter on 101 years of aviation history with their final ever flight. This is sad news to hear for sure, especially since many modern airlines nowadays don't just go out of business overnight it seems. However, the financial situation at Czech Airlines had been bad for years. In fact, I can't remember a time when they didn't have financial troubles. And eventually, after the COVID pandemic and the lowering of government funding following the pandemic's subsequent ending, the airline just ran out of financial runway. Moving forward, the airline's fleet comprised of all Airbus A320 and A330 family aircraft is now set to be absorbed by former competitor Smart Wings. This is unique as Smart Wings has never flown any A320 or A330 aircraft, and we'll have to see how it works out for them. Unfortunately, this does mean, at least for the time being, there's currently no more Czech Airlines. And we've lost Czech Airlines as nothing more than an airline in the history books. If you'd like to learn more about Czech Airlines, and even see some footage on board their final ever flight, check out my friend Patrick Shea's excellent video. Link is in the upper right, or down in the description. Well, that's all I have for you in this very long installment of Aviation News. I hope you've enjoyed as usual. If you're enjoying this series, make sure to leave a like, comment, and consider subscribing to my channel. It helps out a lot, and I would really appreciate it. Also, by the time you're seeing this video, I'm currently flying with Southwest Airlines. It's my very first time flying with Southwest, and of course, there'll be a trip report video about that flight coming very soon as well. But like I said, that's gonna do it for this video. And until next time, as always, I'll be wishing you blue skies and tailwinds.